So in this video, we're going to talk about how to factor perfect square trinomials. So let's look at what happens when you expand x plus 3 squared. We know that this becomes x plus 3 times x plus 3. So if we use FOIL to figure out the terms, we have first times first, which is x squared. Then we have outside, x times 3, which is 3x. We now have inside, which is 3 times x, so that's 3x. And then we have last times last, which is 3 times 3, which is 9. So remember, now we need to add up all our terms. So we have x squared plus 3x plus 3x plus 9. Those two middle terms are like terms that we can go ahead and combine, and that's going to give us x squared plus 6x plus 9. So this is where we get that perfect square trinomials factoring pattern, because notice that x plus 3 squared is going to become the square of the first term, so x squared, 2 times the product, okay? So we're going to have x times 3, which gives us 3x. 3x times 2 is how we get that 6x and then plus the square of the last term. So 3 squared is where we get the 9. So that's how we figure out that a plus b squared is equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So let's look at what happens when you expand x minus 4 squared. Well, x minus 4 squared, we have first times first, which is x squared. Outside, x times negative 4, which is negative 4x. Inside, negative 4 times x, which is negative 4x. And then last, negative 4 times negative 4, which is positive 16. So now we're going to go ahead and add up all our terms. So when we do that, that minus 4x and minus 4x will combine to minus 8x. So that's how we get x squared minus 8x plus 16. So this gives us that other half of the perfect square trinomials factoring pattern if we're squaring a difference. So if we have x minus 4 squared, that's going to be the square of the first term, so x squared. And then we take the product, x times negative 4, which is negative 4x, and then multiply that by 2 to give us negative 8x. And then we take the square of the last term. So the square of negative 4 is positive 16, right? Because remember, if we square a negative number, like negative 4 squared, that's going to be negative 4 times negative 4, and that's how we get positive 16. So a minus b squared is going to be a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. So whenever we have a trinomial, this is one of those factoring patterns that we can use. So this is in your study guide of factoring patterns. Um, and also you can see here it's in the flow chart. If we have a trinomial, once we factor it at a GCF, we can check whether we can use the perfect square trinomials factoring pattern. And I want to point out that you can factor these trinomials using the A is 1 or A is not 1 process. It's just that if you recognize a perfect square trinomial, it makes it a little bit easier sometimes to use this pattern instead. So I just want to remind you of how we find the square root of a variable term, because in this process, we're going to be needing to do that. Um, remember, if it's a term with an exponent, then we just take half of the exponent. So y to the sixth has a square root of y cubed. If we have a coefficient and a variable with an exponent, remember, we just take the square root of the coefficient. So the square root of 36 is 6. And then we take half of the exponent. So that's going to be 6x to the 12th. So when we're factoring perfect square trinomials, remember we always want to factor out a GCF if there is one. And then we want to check to see whether the first and last term are perfect squares. If they are, then we'll take the square root of the first term and the square root of the last term. We'll label these as a and b, and then we'll check whether the middle term is equal to 2ab. And then we can factor either using you know, the a plus b squared or the a minus b squared. So let's see what that looks like. So if we have x squared plus 14x plus 49. So notice that x squared is a perfect square and 49 is a perfect square, right? So we can say that a equals x because that's the square root of x squared. And then b equals 7, right? Because that's the square root of 49. So like basically what I'm saying is that this is a squared and this is b squared. Well, we want to check if that 14x is equal to 2ab. So 2ab in this case is going to be 2 times x times 7, and that's equal to 14x, which is right. So that means that we can do a perfect square trinomial factoring pattern. So in this case, we have a plus right here, so that means that I'm going to use this a plus b squared. So this is just going to turn into x plus 7 squared. And if you want to, you can expand this out and use FOIL to verify that this is in fact true. So now let's try this example. We have x squared minus 10x plus 25. 
So x squared is a perfect square, and 25 is a perfect square. So a is going to equal the square root of x squared, which is x. b is going to equal the square root of 25, which is 5. So let's see now if we have 2ab. So that's going to be 2 times x times 5, which is equal to 10x. So that is our middle term. Um, notice that here we have a minus sign, so I'm going to do a minus b squared. So this is going to be x minus 5 squared. So now you can go ahead and pause the video and try doing this example on your own. So here you can see the first term is x squared and the last term is 36. So that means that a equals x and the square root of 36 is 6, so b equals 6. 2ab will be equal to 12x, so that does match our middle term. Um, here we have a plus sign, so we're going to write this as the sum. So we have x plus 6 squared. So now let's try this example. So notice that here the first term is a perfect square. This is a squared. And the last term is a perfect square. So a is going to equal the square root of 16, which is 4, and then half the exponent, so we have 4x. b is going to equal the square root of 9, which is 3. So if we look at this now, we want to figure out what 2ab is. So that's going to be 2 times 4x times 3. So that's going to give me 2 times 4, which is 8. 8 times 3, which is 24. And then we have x. So 24x does match our middle term. Um, notice that here we have a subtraction sign, so we're going to use a minus b. So this is going to be 4x minus 3 squared. So now you can go ahead and pause the video and try doing this example on your own. So here the first term is 9x squared. The square root of 9x squared is 3x. The last term is 1 and the square root of 1 is 1. 2ab is 2 times 3x times 1, which is 6x. So notice that here we have a plus sign, so we're going to write this as a plus b squared. And that gives us 3x plus 1 squared. So if you're trying to factor a perfect square trinomial, these factoring patterns can help you simplify the process.